Welcome back, everybody, to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast. On today's show, we have Tim Mahoney. Welcome, Tim, to the show. Hey, Victoria, thanks for having me on. You're quite welcome. I want to jump right in, and I want to share with the listeners and the viewers on YouTube a little bit about you, Tim. You are, first of all, film producer. We'll talk about film producer Tim Mahoney, uh, the award-winning director of six feature films, Patterns of Evidence, The Red Sea Miracle 1 and 2, Patterns of Evidence, The Moses Controversy, Patterns of Evidence, are you getting a little bit of a, a repeat here, aren't you? You're understanding what's happening here. Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus, and now Patterns of Evidence, Journey to Mount Sinai, Part 1. Tim is the founder of Thinking Man Films. I love that title. And Thinking Man Films and Media, a Minneapolis, Minnesota-based international documentary and publishing company. He has spent almost 20 years exploring some of the biggest questions of the Bible and what they mean for our world today. His insatiable curiosity led him on a journey across the world, interviewing some of the world's leading Bible scholars, archaeologists, and historians to seek answers. What he's uncovered is an amazing pattern of evidence that matches the events recorded in the Bible. Wow. I, you know, I, I was so taken, just so, actually, let me just say so blessed by the privilege to watch the two of your films. One of them was The Journey to Mount Sinai, part one, which has released. It's my understanding that it came out uh, well, let's see. Today is the 18th, right? So <laughs> yesterday and today, as we're as we're recording this, by the time this podcast actually will will air, I think your part two of that will be maybe in the in the theaters as well. But I also had the privilege to watch the journey home. And that was so deeply moving. And it's been described as deeply moving, rightly so. And I believe that may have uh, that may have come out in September, if I'm not mistaken. And that particular film shares the per your personal journey, how and how you were guided to create documentaries after surviving a volatile childhood while leaning on your mother's faith as you fled from an abusive father. One of the things that was so striking to me as I watched that particular film, and it's been a while now, but was just the title patterns of evidence i kept thinking the whole time and then the journey home but i kept thinking how there were patterns of evidence of god in your life and how you could even look back historically and see that our gracious heavenly father was always with you with your family along the way and there was just that magnificent parallel and maybe that's what you really intended there but could you go ahead and just tell us a little bit, Tim, about writing these amazing documentaries, the journey home, what prompted you to do all of this, and, and how you got where you are here today? You know, I was thinking, I'm, I'm not a person who journals, but I do think that <clears throat> uh, writing down when God has done something is important, and I, I believe uh, because we can go back and read it when we're in a difficult time. And I have written uh, down at different times, uh, you know, so I would not forget <clears throat> because it's easy to forget what God has done. And uh, and the one reason why we made this film called The Journey Home was during the making of the Patterns of Evidence films. And we started with, uh, you know, 2002 was my first trip you know, into Egypt. And that film took about 12 years to make. And it was an up and down process. It was times when I just felt like uh, we were in real trouble and we weren't going to make it, uh, you know, financially. And that's always been a battle for me as a filmmaker is, are, am I going to go under? Uh, and, uh, you know, it hasn't changed. It's always been this, uh, this difficult journey uh, to make film. Of course, we see that in the arts a lot. But during that during the making of that film, what we're doing is we're showing that God has acted in history. But I was also seeing, and I have to remind myself of this, that God was acting in my own personal history. And so uh, we had one of our key people uh, get ill. 
and he got uh, sick and he actually got a disease and he died. And his name was Dr. Leonard Muller. And he, uh, he would, lost his ability to speak. It was a, a form of uh, Alzheimer's that was de really debilitating. And he was just a couple years older than me. And he is in this film. Uh, he's in both of the films. Uh, he contributed a lot to the idea of having a pattern of evidence. And he was a DNA research scientist in Sweden. And he worked on, you know, drugs, uh, uh, it, or, you know, tr trying to help people create new pharmaceutical things to help. Or he also investigated where pollution was anyway. The sad part was that was that I could see that we would lose people, and as we would as we would lose people, um, I thought we need to have their testimonies before we lose more people. And I wanted, mm -hmm. uh, as you saw in the movie The Journey Home, my wife is a huge part of the fact that I was able to make these films, mm -hmm. and that was a really important uh, testimony that I wanted to get. And my wife is not a type of person that wants to be in front of the camera. But I really felt that God gave her um, the uh, inspiration, I think it was, as well as the passion to speak. And so each one of us uh, could started to reflect back at when we were making this film or as we were going along this journey in, of our marriage, because in, that, in the journey home, you're going to see that I'm telling the story about my own personal walk with the Lord and how we had to trust the Lord in difficult times. And uh, she was also sharing that and how we met and how this all came about. And, and so I'm really, really happy that that story was able to be captured, or should I say those many different parts of the story were able to be captured in that movie, The Journey Home. And also the, the, the in some ways, the reconciliation that I have with my own father and I'm sure you probably have a lot of people that are watching your podcasts uh, that have broken family relationships. Uh, they might be on one side of the equation or the other. And they either, you know, have parents that uh, things are sideways uh, or they haven't talked for a while. In my case, you know, I saw my dad, you know, once I le once we left him when I was uh, about 11 years old, then I saw him once when I was about 14. And then I saw him again when I was 18. But when I saw him when I was 18, he just walked past me and we never connected. And then I saw him when I was probably in my mid thirties. And then later, uh, uh, you know, like quite a bit later, you know, then I reconnected with him, uh, and had a, a few years with him before he passed away. And that's that journey of, well, how do you, how do you trust a father and how do you trust our heavenly father, uh, when your earthly father, um, hasn't been trustworthy and um and then i also share being a father myself you know when when you when you are a father you sometimes model maybe the type of parent you had you go oh this is what a father should do you know so it's easy for us as parents to want to um uh you know i mean as a man you want to provide for your family but you can sometimes spend all that time providing and then you're not providing the other things that they need besides a roof over their head. And you're providing the kind of encouragement or insight or just being alongside them. And uh, so um, th that film, The Journey Home is a reflection. It's a reflection on, on our life while we, while we can reflect. And that's the reason why I'm so happy with that film. Mm. And, that it, that it was something we were able to to create and and uh, and I'm thankful that I was able to um, uh, uh, to to tell that testimony. And if we get back to patterns, you know, um, the my the films uh, patterns of evidence. Now this is our fifth film. It's a um, God acts in history, and we can see that pattern of Him working at different times. And that's the reason why we selected to put patterns of evidence colon then the the subject matter so we started with the exodus and then we went to the moses controversy which is about the writing moses's ability to write and then we did red sea miracle one and two so right now people are going to be uh uh you know if they want to investigate our films they can investigate them uh through our website patternsofevidence.com
Mm. You know, I, one of my favorite aspects when I watched the about the about Mount Sinai was this, and I, I want to make sure everyone could see that. That's a what you call a scorecard. So whose idea was it to keep this quote scorecard? Can you explain this a little bit to us? <clears throat> well, what happened was is as I was working on the film, I I I was praying about a, over about a, over a month ago, a uh, month and a half ago for for a breakthrough, and um, then the thought came to me, you know, that we needed to have a scorecard. And this the the thing about making films is that, and especially the kinds of films that I'm making, that they're more complex uh, because there's a lot of information in them because we're we're really um, in a scholarly, I see you've got the book think behind, behind you. And, you know, you're thinking you're, you're wanting to get people to think, well, sometimes you have to have tools to help you hold your thoughts, uh, you know, together as you're, as you're getting new information, you know, and to make it entertaining and everything. But I thought, well, what if we, and I've got that scorecard right here. What if I could take and create a tool that would be like a scorecard so that, and what we're referring to is that in the film Journey to Mount Sinai, we're going to look at different mountains uh, that where the Israelites went to. This is a really important location because this is where God met Moses at the burning bush. And he said, bring these people back here to worship me. And the reason why it's very exciting is because uh, there's a real possibility that we've found the location that, you know, that there is a location here. And we've got six candidates that we're, we're looking at. And the Mount Sinai scorecard is able to allow you to, to keep track of your, of the score as you look at, well, what is the biblical criteria that we should be looking for? And, um, and so there it is. I, I, if you go to our website, patternsofevidence.com, we've got a scorecard and you can download it and read the biblical criteria that preps you for the film. And then uh, we even have a map and shows you, you know, what, what mountains we're looking at. Uh, and then when you watch the film, you can take notes and you're interactive because we're all on the hunt and you can decide. I put it kind of like a bowling card, right? You get either get a strike, a spare, or a gutter ball. So it's either, if you see evidence for a particular mountain, you can say yes by filling it, uh, the, this little square in all the way, or you can do a side, you know, partial maybe, or leave it blank. And that's the reason why um, uh, we, we chose this method, which was to allow you to reflect then back so that you don't get confused, but you can reflect back what mountains you think uh, have the better opportunity to be um to fill fulfill all the criteria right now did you do this with the other movies as well or so far just this one because, just this, okay. yeah but we someone said hey you need to go back and put that scorecard in for the other one so yes yeah. I, I might just do that but do that on a rainy day right just when yeah. you have nothing else to do yeah. well and and so now we're doing part two you're filming part two and I believe it's scheduled to release then early next year in 2023. Do I have that right? Yes, that's our hope and prayer. Yep. Okay. We, still have to raise, we have to raise the money to to edit that, but gotcha. So my husband told me, I said, because we watched these the screeners together, and he said, he said, ask him where he lands on that. And I said, he's not going to tell us that. And though we can kind of get a flavor as we go along. Uh, although your questions to these different scholars and, you know, these researchers, they're, they're very open-ended and not really leading questions per se, but sometimes just your tone, I'm wondering like if you're still skeptical or if you're like, mm, I don't know about the answers that you hear. So is, I'm going to ask you, will you, will you tell us or no? We got to watch to see. <laughs> uh, I, in the beginning of the movie, I say, I'm going to give you my answers at the end of the investigation. <laughs> so yes, at the end, at the end of this investigation, I'm going to be keeping score too. And I will give you how I rank the, the films. And there's gonna be, there's still a couple of trick uh, questions here, bonus points, which is Katie's <laughs> Barnia and Beyond Yam Suf. Those are also uh, cues, uh, but then there's possibly another hidden twist in this uh, as well, which I'm 
which I know there is. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, for some people, they may say, okay, so what? What's the big deal about finding archaeological evidence that supports the Bible? What is the big deal with all, all of that? Why does it even matter? Well, uh, it matters because God is telling us that he really did do these things. And a lot of, of our young people are going off to universities and, and they think they're going to take a class on the Old Testament. And uh, what they're going to be doing is potentially taking an anti-Bible test, a class. Mm -hmm. That that class, uh, the, what we're seeing is that a lot of uh, professors are basically telling us that there is no evidence for the Bible. But what they're telling, the reason why they're saying that is because their professors are telling the, told them that. And, uh, and they've, their, their schools are actually, um, that's, the, that's the political, uh, you know, positional stance for the Bible. That if you actually say anything supportive of the Bible, you could lose your job. And so it, it's becoming popular to be anti-biblical and to say there's no evidence, but they've tried to use it in scholarly terms. But what they've done, just so that everyone knows what the, how, how this has been played out, is that they pick a particular little time in history and they place the Bible events at that time. And if you look at our film, Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus, what we're saying is that uh, that particular time period isn't even when the Bible places its events, by the way, but that's where everyone has placed it and it has to do with the time of Ramesses. And in the very, very beginning uh, of Egyptian, uh, let's say the development of Egyptology, they used the Bible to, to date Egyptian history. And they found a synchronism, which is something they could find a particular point in time. And they, they basically said, these, the Bible dates and these dates will fit here. That's one thing that happened. Another thing is that they basically looked at uh, we've heard the cities of Ramesses that the Israelites were there. And that's in our first film, The Patterns of Evidence. And if you look at the time period of the of Ramesses, what you're going to see is that there is no um, evidence for the Israelites at that time period. Uh, and so, but, but people have just made up uh, either uh, ways to explain that, or they've said there's no evidence for the Bible. But what happened is, is that if you go deeper below the city of Ramesses, that's where you're going to find all the evidence. But no one's told us that before. Uh, and that's what the first film uncovers, uh, is showing that there is a difference in the time periods. And that's where you find the pattern. And that's the reason why patterns are so important is because a pattern is a scientific tool. And then you can find things in a sequence. So if you've got these different events happening at different times and they're in the right sequence, that then is a better way to look for events in history than dependent upon scholars that might have chosen one thing and then built a theory around it. So what I have been doing is just as an independent, uh, you know, investigative filmmaker, I'm saying, well, if you don't believe the Bible, uh, I have to understand what your argument is. And as I've gone into those arguments, I basically said, well, <laughs> that argument has some problems with it. It has some real serious flaws with it. And there's consequences. Uh, there are consequences for uh, ignoring the Bible. Uh, and and uh, so anyway, I almost, in the first film, I had a crisis of faith where I could have basically been an unbeliever and I wouldn't be here today. I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd probably be... I don't know, but uh, in this particular case, I've really felt like there was uh, something I had to pay attention to. And that's when I started finding the pattern. And uh, we've been just faithfully going along, looking for the pattern as we move through history. Mm, what caused your almost crisis of faith? Well, I was told that there wasn't any evidence when I went to the location of, of that ancient location of Ramesses, there was an archaeologist or an Egyptologist there, uh, Manfred Bitek, and he told me that, um, I asked him, have you found evidence for the Israelites? And he said, so far not. 
And when he said that, I was shocked because when I had traveled around the world, gone to the very location, and for him to tell me, I, I really trusted his judgment. I had heard that he had basically uh, thought that there is evidence, but what I didn't know at the time and I didn't piece together was that there was enough political pressure against him to basically be very cautious in what he said. Mm. And literally a decade or, or over a decade later, I met him at a, at a, um, in Jerusalem. And then he basically had exciting evidence that he wanted to talk about. And that was an amazing interview. That was in uh, the Red Sea Miracle One, where I met with him in, uh, um, at the, I think it was the Albright Institute in Jerusalem. And he shares uh, that Egyptian documents have a Hebrew term for geshem, or it's gezem. And he said, why would, it, why would a Hebrew term of gezem be in these Egyptian documents? But it's the same thing as Goshen, the land where the Israelites were. So some he believes that that is pointing to the fact that the Israelites were living in that area. But I was sitting in my edit suite, uh, and for uh, for your your audience, uh, I think this is probably the closest thing I had to a sort of like a spiritual darkness uh, coming into the room. It just I felt a chill, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know. I mean, I was looking at footage. I was looking at this interview and I said, why isn't there evidence? And I just said, God, you have to explain to me why there isn't evidence. And I started to literally cry uh, because, and then this thought came into my mind. I felt the chill come into the room and this thought came in and said, everything your family has believed about the Bible, that your mother believes about the Bible is a lie. And, that, and when I heard that word a lie, I felt as if I had uh, fell into a dark, cold chasm of despair uh, and just absolutely tragic sense of loss. And that then this other thought came from this side of my myself. It said, stop editing, get up, go to your office. And so I immediately left the edit room. I walked uh, through the office building and I went to my office, go to the bookcase. I walked to the bookcase, read that book. And that's when I pulled out a book that a friend had given me a year earlier. And uh, it was by Egyptologist David Roll. And I opened it up and I couldn't believe it to my surprise was that it was the very dig site that I, I um, was at. And he was, he, had, he was an agnostic British Egyptologist who basically said, I see a pattern of evidence for the early Israelites at Manfred B. Tech's dig site. And, and I looked at it and I started putting the pieces together. A lot of, uh, there, are, there are patterns of evidence that are being ignored because, of the, because people won't interpret them as being a part of the Bible. And the one reason is because it was earlier in time period. So they can't see that pattern. So what scholars will say is they'll say, well, this is where the mythical idea of the Exodus comes from, not the real Exodus. And uh, so I've devoted, you know, the last uh, 20 some years of my life working at making these films and, um, you know, trying to get them. Uh, I believe it's a calling and I just have to have faith that God is going to provide for us to make each film. Thank you so much for sharing that about that moment and just opening the door a little bit so that we could understand that level of discouragement. And I think that we've all probably felt that discouraged. Back in 2016, I had a cri what I call a crisis of faith also, which led me down some really dark paths. And actually one of the reasons that this ministry was actually birth choose to think to and part of that is to that you know god tells us very clearly to take our thoughts captive and to be transformed through the renewing of our minds those are our kind of our theme verses for the show and for my ministry because choosing to think allowed me to if, if my thoughts got me into a dark place, and of course the enemy was at work because I was partnering or agreeing with him, as you could have done that very day in that very moment, had not there been that perhaps divine intervention 
kind of, you know, pushing back against that and leading you to, hey, come in, come in here, stop editing, walk this way now, look at this. Mm -hmm. And for me, it wasn't so quick. It wasn't so fast. It was a, a little bit of a longer road. But our, our thoughts are, are so powerful and the enemy definitely is at work and the Bible and the authority of the Bible certainly is being attacked at every angle. Archaeological evidence to me is one of the most powerful uh, sources of evidence that we have. We have prophetic proof. We have uh, our own personal testimonies that, that change our lives, but there's something to me about connecting the dots bet between archaeological evidence and what the Bible says that just lends to the credibility of the, the source of truth that, that we follow. So I applaud you for, for, for that. I thank God that he placed this amazing calling on your life and that you have not, you've not stopped though I am quite certain there have been moments of discouragement. Even like you, you've already mentioned, just even the financial side and just being in the industry itself, the hurdles that you have to go through to continue to press forward. So I wonder, Tim, is there some little nugget of truth or some little inspiring, uh, I don't know, a method or something that you do even daily to help you take those thoughts captive or or make sure that you continue on this path even though you may be hitting resistance or you may be finding yourself discouraged is there any single thing that you do to just keep pressing forward and i know god's involved in that and i know it's by his strength but on your own is there anything that you do to to stay on this road well i I'm going through it right now. I mean, I'm feeling that pressure. Here it is. This is the night when our second night of our our film is being released, and we're in the battle, you know, of of uh, of you know. Well, we've got the movie out, and then uh, uh, we need to make the next film. We need to basically. Uh, we're a nonprofit now. We have Patterns of Evidence Foundation, and um, you know, so we depend upon. Uh, other people to help us make these films and so the next film you asked like you know the, this is a two-part film journey to mount sinai part two is coming uh and but we we need to get help just to pay our staff we have a small group of people here and we're going to um uh, uh, to trust the lord so one of the things that i've done and that i'm doing i'm having to practice what i'm saying you know as they say practice what you preach is that um what i have found is that i need to look to where i believe the lord is taking us not at this current situation now what i have to do is practically understand uh how i'm going to deal with this situation you know try to get a handle on it and then i need to, uh to so let's say i have to remind myself that the voices that want to come into my thoughts about destruction and about uh you know this is this might be the end of it i ha i've i found i just say i don't believe that i you know i don't believe that anymore that's not going to be what's happening and i've got to basically say no i'm going to move in this direction this is going to be difficult but i'm moving in this direction and we're going to solve this problem this way and uh, so that's what i am practicing right now and i then can't get become uh, number two is I don't want to become incapacitated uh, uh, with, uh, you know, making all these different films uh, is a big job. There's a lot of work to be done. And, I, and I'm and i not doing it on my own. That first of all, I believe these are films that God has wanted to be done and that they're his films and that he will provide for them and he'll provide for the, the people and the resources. So I have to, I, well, I guess what I'm trying to practice right now is I'm finding the scripture verses that I need to meditate on, you know, uh, like even this, sometimes you could say, Hey, this is like getting the, the psalmist says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me, you know, 
thy rod and thy staff comfort me. So sometimes this feels like I could be in the shadow of the death of, of this company, this, uh, this organization, because where is the resource going to come from? And I have to remember, well, whatever happens at the end of the day, I'm in his care is, you know, and I'm preaching to myself right now. I'm, I'm hopefully going to listen to my own words here. Uh, and I think that my mother, you know, uh, didn't have all the answers, but she had enough uh, of faith and she did consistent things. She consistently took us to church, uh, church from service to service as a single parent mother with four kids. That was her goal. I'm going to make it, uh, you know, to Sunday morning. And then we, then she would have, uh, she, she was really frugal. She would make, uh, uh, food from a, a roast or something. And then, you know, it, she'd invite another family that didn't have a father and they came over and we all pitched it, you know, pitched in. Oh. And she was consistent and she trusted and she made it to Sunday night. And then we went to church on Monday night. Mm. Uh, because it was youth. It was like uh, like Boy Scout, kind of like, it was called Royal Rangers. Yeah. We went on Wednesday night. Mm. So she kept herself plugged in to a body of believers. And I think that's really, really, you know, critically important. And, uh, and I think that I, my encouragement to other people is that, uh, the enemy wants to get you alone in the corner and, you know, beat you up. But it is important to be in fellowship with other people that believe. So uh, that's one, you know, part of it. The other thing is, is that I, I stopped watching the news. My wife said that I'll let you know if it's important, you know, but I have enough cares in my own life of things I need to do. If I watch the news and get into all these different things, the human mind wants to know about everything. And oftentimes it's not worth knowing about. It's not worth carrying that burden of, of all those different things. The Lord can only, um, the Lord's given enough, enough cares, right? For our, for our own things we're supposed to do. And then we're supposed to bring, you know, bring them to him and trust him. So I think that for me, it has helped to focus on what needed to happen, where what needs to be done next, and then just by faith, move in that direction. That then means I'm not curling up in a ball somewhere uh, and becoming more and more uh, paralyzed. So, uh, and that's, that's, you know, like I said, I'm talking to myself here. Uh, that's the, that's the, the vision of, of, uh, of how do you, have the right kind of mindset to yeah. to do the things God has called us to do. Wow, you have so beautifully said said that and explained that. And I thank you so much for sharing that, especially about your mama. I I think she was probably, I think I could safely say one of the most influential people in your life. Is that true? The most influential, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, I have a grandmother like that. She's she's passed on, but she lost six of her adult children and two husbands to death in her lifetime. She had 10 children. My dad uh, and, and my aunt are the two surviving children now, but she never, she never threw her hand up to God. Never. Despite all that pain and suffering there, she was so tenacious, something inside her, that, that great love that, that God had for her and she felt and she had for him. It was just so apparent. And her life itself, like you explained with your mom, how she was consistent and she was relent, relentless. No doubt she was exhausted. She was tired. She may have even been discouraged, but she continued to do what was right. And it may have been costly for her to do that. She also thought beyond herself. I heard you say that. She, as a single mom with four children, said, you know what? I'm going to bring other people into my home that I can help. She wasn't self-pitying and so self-focused. Her mind was on 
on being that salt and light to others and being that living example of we're in this together. Let's let's group. Let's warm each other uh, with their with their. You know, let's gather together and we'll find that warmth of God and His love. And what a what a hero she was. And that's the way I look at my my grandmother just through some of her her deeds and the way she lived her life. Um, just absolutely astounding. So I thank you so much for that, for being vulnerable with us and, and sharing that, that you've explained a process that I teach. And I don't want to go into all the details in that, but just to nail down a little bit about number one, recognize what you're thinking about. Number two, reject or resist the lies. And then you even went to step three, which is replace it with God's truth. What does God say about you, about your scenario, about himself right now? And when we begin to do that over and over and over again, that helps keep us on that path. And by God's strength and through relying on him, his good graces in our life, his presence, then, then yes, we can kind of keep holding that torch up high. So what, one last thing, Tim, that I want to talk about before, before we close out is something that also captured my attention was you have thinker updates. And, and I, I realize you've already touched on this a little bit, just even on the college campus, on the university campus. I actually teach Spanish at the university level. I've done that for over 30 years. And I know that hostile environment that's there, even in a Christian college. We have some wonderful Christian colleges and universities here in Kentucky around where I, I live. And but yet there is an animosity or, or it's it can be antagonistic toward the Christian faith, though they're a Christian college. It's very seems so ironic. However, we you're, you kind of gave us a call to think. Your mission, your ministry is one to think. Look at the patterns of evidence. We, we can't just rely on what one person said. Let's, let's go at this. Let's dig deeper. Let's research. Let's think. Use our own minds to think. You have an insatiable curiosity that, that God is using to allow you to begin, you know, to, to, put these films out and to research and to go and to dig beneath the surface and just that we don't think very much anymore. It's, it's astounding to me, but you have, you have thinker updates and this is more, I think, a way to keep in contact with what's going on with all the documentaries and with your ministry and to just stay in touch and so forth. But I loved how you call it thinker update. So can you tell us a little bit about why, what's up with that? Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Well, I was trying to understand how do I uh, keep in touch with people because it's sometimes there's several years between, you know, when I'm making one film to the next and, Right after the first film, I uh, I sent out uh, on the screen, actually, I said, if you want to stay in touch, you know, this is it. And we got like 4,500 emails. And it took us a while to figure out, well, what do we do with those? And I came up with uh, the name Thinking Man Films for the company. And then I thought, well, what if we just have people become thinkers? And I think it's... Uh, you know, there's a verse that says, oh, we're to love the Lord God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. And often we forget that uh, that our mind is important to how we live our life. And we could probably have our heart in the right place, but our mind is sometimes not in the right place. And like I said, like you and I are, are talking about the fact that what does the Bible say about our future? You know, uh, that the Lord has plans for us, you know. And, um, and I need to keep my thoughts on that because otherwise I can get discouraged or I can be distracted or I can, uh, you know, have confusion. And what we're learning uh, about apologetics right now is that, uh, and apologetics is the defense of the faith, is that, is that um, they are very valuable. When people come to faith, they come to faith because it's really the sense of the Holy Spirit is prompting them to make a decision. Uh, and uh, what's happening with the, um, with 
the, the thinking, well, our thinkers are meant to encourage people because we're showing them patterns of evidence in archaeology. We're, we're helping them to be educated. And so as you're growing in your faith, you need to have uh, well, people that are actually growing are actually growing because they're thinking more deeply about things. And they're not going to be knocked over as easily. Uh, but when other philosophies come into play, <clears throat> in my particular case, there, there have been a lot of people and college students that have watched our movies and said, oh, I get it. And you start to see that there is a, the, the narrowness of the way people are viewing uh, biblical archaeology is that, that they have a real narrow filter, narrow focus on that. And they've basically relegated it to a particular time period. Uh, and they've been getting away with that for a long time. But that's not really where the pattern is. And there's reasons why things are, are, are I think, don't make sense because but yet people spend a lot of energies writing books about what, the way the world is. But is it really the way the world is? That's the reason why it's important. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever heard of the name Norman Geisler, but uh, he was an apologist, uh, wrote a lot of books. He loved uh, the Exodus movie. He said, this is exactly the way you need to look at things. You need to look for patterns because patterns are more important than people's interpretations because patterns are speaking to you. And then you can interpret that pattern. That's open for debate. What we're seeing now is that people, if they're willing to be thinkers, and we send out, like if you go to our website, patternsofevidence.com, you can sign up to become a thinker. And uh, then I'll be sending you, we have emails going out pretty much every week. Um, we also have something called the Historical Faith Society, which is uh, another level of support for what we're doing. Uh, all the films that we make are are created through you know donations and we're making them so that you have tools so you could have a library of these films and when you have friends or neighbors or somebody you want to talk about they're very shareable mm -hmm. and you can then have an intellectual conversation about well, what did you think about that and what's nice about the the idea of thinking is that um you're able to have a dialogue with people i think and, and in other words, if you ask why questions or, you know, well, why, why is it that you think that way? And that's one of the main questions that I ask in my films. And I have to see, is the reason you're, is the reason why you're taking this position? I need to know what led you to that. Mm -hmm. So I can know whether or not I can find any credibility in that. So I think that that uh, for for some reason God has called me to be a filmmaker that asks questions, asks people to think, and then showing a pattern of evidence for uh, the Old Testament. Uh, and there is a reason for that, and I believe it's because it, uh, there are probably people that that are definitely set on undermining it, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, we need to know that that foundation is true and it's it's there so mm, well i for one want to thank you so much for your amazing work and accepting that calling on your life your work is valuable and very encouraging and inspirational so i i really look forward to it's making me think that i, I think i'll just go ahead and air this episode today i was just recording you know we get so i get so far ahead in all my interviews and we're like we're already into february of next year and which is wonderful but it it's not as timely so i think what i'll do tim is i'm just going to go ahead and and air this today even though sometimes i'll do little bonus episodes or whatever just so we can try to get the the word out and uh, see if we can get as many people to the theaters as we possibly can here in our area. So I'll, I'll do that. I would, I would love to do that. And uh, again, I couldn't thank you enough. And you've already mentioned the website a couple of times, but one more time, how to see all these wonderful films. Yeah, it's uh, uh, <clears throat> patternsofevidence.com, patternsofevidence.com. And if they want to go to the theater uh, tonight for this film, they can just go, it'll, it'll be uh journey to mount sinai they can hit uh, buy tickets and they can put their zip code in uh it'll take them to fathom events and they put their zip code in and tells you the theater and you can uh, buy your tickets yeah perfect that's wonderful well thank you for so much for being on the show today we really appreciate you and your work thank you for having me